Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll be exploring how to automate logins using Selenium. Selenium is widely used for browser automation, and one of the most popular things th that is done in browser automation is the automation of logins. The reason being that most websites are locked behind login screens, and if you want to automate a task on those websites, you need to first automate the login itself to actually log you in to that website. So that's why this is such a popular, or it's a popular problem, really, not really a popular task. So how do we do this? How do we automate a login using Selenium? Well, we'll discuss that in today's tutorial. This is the website that we're gonna be practicing on. It's a nice demo website created by somebody used for automation practice. We have these credentials over here that we'll be using, and here's our username and password field. Well, let's go and first set up our Selenium code. Now, the first thing um, that you need to, need to know is that Selenium, setting up Selenium can be a little annoying, as in you need to like download these web drivers in the normal approach anyway. You need to download these, like you want to use Chrome, go to download the Chrome web driver. You want to use Firefox, go download the Firefox web driver. But there's a different way of doing it uh, that I've found recently and I've been using a lot is using this library called Web Driver Manager. This is a very cool library um, that basically automates all of that for you. It downloads the uh, appropriate web driver for you, and it also installs it, everything, it handles all of that for you behind the scenes. You don't have to do anything, it's all done in your code, okay? And obviously, for those of you who are first time users to Selenium, also download Selenium, okay? Then make these imports. These are some very basic imports. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna quickly go through this uh, because it's obviously gonna be a, a bit different for different browsers. If you wanna see the whole version of the setup, like the full version, uh, I'll leave a video down in the description below so you can check that out over there. But I'm just gonna go through the basics right now. So basically I'm setting up a Chrome service because I want to use Chrome. In the executable path, normally I would pass in like the path to my downloaded web driver, but because of this library that I'm using, Web Driver Manager, I'm just gonna pass in this instead and install it. That's all I have to do. Okay, so let's continue. We'll make a driver object, Web Driver dot Chrome service. Now pass the service object that we created in here. This creates a driver object, the driver object being the focal point of our application, where all the methods are. Then this is the termination point where we terminate the driver object, terminate the browser. And it's between these two statements that we're gonna write all of our code. So the most second most important statement after creating the driver is get. When we get the web page, we'll go here copy paste this URL, paste it in here, and this gets us this page. So if I run this code now, you'll see that this actually opens up this page in a new browser, okay? And as you can see, it closes instantly because we aren't really doing any, anything. So I'm gonna import the time module and just put in a sleep in there for five seconds. So we get to see it visually a bit, okay? Uh, but realistically, this would not be there in an actual automation task. You would want that to happen as fast as possible. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go to the web page and analyze it. We want to analyze this web page and we want to observe which elements we want to interact with or which elements we need to interact with to automate the login. There are three elements that we need to interact with the username field, the password field, and the submit button. Now, I'm gonna do right click and open up the inspect element, uh, this page, where we can see the HTML code. This may be a bit different depending on the browser that you're using, but the general purpose remains the same. And by the way, just so we're clear, it doesn't matter which browser you're on, the only thing that's gonna change is some of the setup code, okay? Some of this stuff that the code that I'm telling you right now, that's not gonna change at all, okay? The actual automation task will not change. So this is the 
HTML code for this username field. Okay, it's highlighting, you can see that. Similarly, right below it is the password field. Now what we need to look for is a unique identifier, a new unique identifier with which we can access this input field and then reference it in our code. So what is unique about this, about this HTML element? Well, we can use the ID. This ID property that you see here, ID is equal to username, this is generally done. ID properties are generally added so that we can access this element. They're typically unique. So what I'm going to do, uh, let me show you, seeing is believing. So I'm going to come here and say driver find element. Then I'm going to make an import actually dot common dot by import by I'll do by dot. Now these are different ways through which we can access an element in an HTML element. You can see here that ID is an option. So again, like I said, it's a very popular way of accessing an element. So we'll do this. Then we'll do over here. What was the ID? What was the ID? Username, right? Let's just verify that. Okay, the ID was username. So that's what we pass into the second parameter. And this returns a reference to that field. Okay. Now what we can then do, now that we have this reference, we can use the send keys function to pass in the value student. Why student? Because that is the credentials given here, the valid credentials. So we'll do the same thing for the password. We'll duplicate this, paste this, and just change this to password because password, the password field has the ID of password and we'll change this to password123, okay? So we're good so far, but now what we need to do is click on the button, okay? So let's take a look at the button. We need to figure out how to access the button. So over here, I can see that the button has two things, two ways we can access it. One through the ID, second through the class, okay? So we could use the class in this scenario but the ID is generally a better idea because uh, there could be other buttons, for example, with the class button, but I, I don't think there's going to be more than one button on this page with the ID of submit. Okay, so I'll come over here, then do submit button is equal to driver dot find element, then by, you can do class name over here and do button if you want to. But again, like I said, in this scenario, ID is better. So we'll do, it's called submit, right? Then we'll do submit button dot click. That's it. Okay. So it, it, this should go well if everything has been done properly, which I believe it, it has. So we can see the username and password has been entered. The button has been clicked. It is now loading. And there we go logged in successfully. As you can see, we have successfully automated a login. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in a later video.